In our previous video on the history of Westeros, we covered the conquest of the Seven Kingdoms by Aegon I, and the battles against kings Argilac the Arrogant, Lauren Lannister, and Myrne Gardner. The victory of the Dragonlords in these battles secured their control over the continent, and although their dynasty began well, it was not without bloodshed. The rebellion of Daemon Blackfire was one of these devastating events, and it culminated in the Battle of the Redgrass Field. But before we jump to the video, allow us to thank our sponsor, Hover. Hover is a great service that will help you find a domain for your website. It's not upselling anything and has a clean, easy to use interface along with the best in class customer support team. Hover is a good choice for both the novice and pro site builders as its feature called Hover Connect allows you to connect your domain name to many website builders with a few simple clicks, while the personalized email that matches your domain further supports your online identity. Support our channel, register a domain name for your passion project before it gets snatched, and save 10% by using our link hover.com slash kingsandgenerals or by clicking the link in the description. Aegon I's conquest of Westeros stalled during the attempted invasion of Dawn, and his sister wife Rhaenys, as well as her dragon Meraxes, perished in the fighting. For a century and a half after the conquest, Dawn continued to resist invasions and incursions. In 158, Daeron I conquered Dawn, but their guerrilla tactics and deception led to his death in 161, after he was invited to faux peace negotiations. After the death of the young king, his brother Baelor I became king and made peace with Dawn, which had now regained its independence. Upon his return to the capital at King's Landing, Baelor imprisoned his three sisters in the newly built Maiden Vault of the Red Keep. One of them, Dana continuously escaped from captivity and eventually became pregnant, giving birth to a son, Daemon Waters, in 170 AC. The incredibly pious Baelor I fasted for 40 days and nights after discovering this and perished as a consequence. In 171, he was succeeded by his uncle, Viserys II. This competent monarch had three children, a frail and pious daughter, Nerys, the noble dragon knight, Aemon, and the handsome but irresponsible, Aegon. After a year of rule, King Viserys II died, supposedly of natural causes, but rumours persist that he was poisoned by his son, Aegon, who succeeded as Aegon IV in 172. He immediately began to rule in an arbitrary and careless fashion, filling his court with opportunists, sycophants, and women who would allow the king to satisfy his lusts with them. He would appropriate land from one noble house, only to grant it to another family which had earned his favour on a whim. This caused immense dissatisfaction among the nobility of Westeros. The most damaging impact on the realm would become obvious in 182. The bastard Daemon Waters was an incredibly competent warrior, and supposedly looked the spitting image of Aegon I. At 12 years old, he was knighted by Aegon IV, becoming the youngest knight in Westerosi history. Then, in an act that surprised everyone, he granted the ancestral Valyrian steel blade Blackfire to Daemon, revealing him to be his bastard son. After this, Aegon's 29-year-old trueborn son, Daeron, began to actively oppose his father's rule, and a core of similarly-minded nobles began to form around him. This opposition caused a quarrel between the prince and his father, and the king purposefully questioned the legitimacy of his son. In 184, when Aegon lay on his deathbed, he legitimized his many bastard sons, including the popular Daemon Waters, who then took the name Blackfire. After he did this, Aegon IV died and was succeeded by Daeron II. The Crown Prince received news of his father's death in Dragonstone, and within a fortnight was crowned by the High Septon in the Red Keep. In order to proclaim his legitimacy, the new king also wore his father's crown. Daeron immediately set to work undoing the worst of his father's excesses, 
removing the inept and corrupt members of the late king's small council and replacing them with wise and capable men. He also attempted to address the rot within the city watch, which Aegon IV had let fall into disrepute and decay. Despite his father's appalling treatment of him, Daeron would not undo Aegon's last wishes and delegitimize his bastard half-brothers. Instead, he attempted to stabilize the realm by treating them honorably, allowing them to get the incomes from their lands. The principal great bastard, Daemon Blackfire, was wed to Rohan of Tyrosh, as Aegon had wished. On their wedding day, Daeron granted Daemon a tract of land near the Blackwater and the permission to raise a castle of his own. It is possible that the king did these things because he was kind and just, however others say that he did them to assert his rule and legitimacy. Whatever the motivation, these efforts eventually proved to be in vain. Another key aspect of Daeron's reign was the final unification of the Seven Kingdoms. After two years of negotiation with Dawn, an agreement was reached. Daeron's sister Daenerys was to be joined in marriage with Prince Marin Martell, while Daemon would marry Marin's sister, Moriah. The Princes of Dawn maintained many privileges and rights, as well as maintaining their own laws and tax collection. In 187, Prince Marin knelt and swore his oaths to the Iron Throne. Many Westerosi nobles were now dissatisfied, as it was widely believed that Dawn had gained too many concessions and privileges, and that Dornish nobles had too much influence at court, encouraged by Queen Mariah. Knights and lords, who had been used to intermittent warfare with Dawn, still held their old animosities and began to distrust the peacemaking king. In addition, there were still questions raised about Daeron's legitimacy due to the rumours spread by his late father. All of these factors played a part in sowing the seeds of rebellion, and these would grow over the following decade. Many of the dissatisfied lords and knights of the realm would seek out the exemplary Daemon Blackfire. Two of these nobles, another bastard of Aegor IV, Aegor Bittersteel Rivers, and Sir Quentin Fireball Ball, played a key role in convincing Daemon that he was the rightful heir, and the latter gradually became convinced that he should claim the throne. The young Blackfire himself had ample reason to be dissatisfied. The status of a bastard began to anger him, and there were rumours that the marriage of Daenerys, whom he loved, caused him to loathe King Daeron. In the early weeks of 196, Daeron received word that his half-brother intended to declare himself king within a month. It is not known how this knowledge reached him, but it is likely that another of the great bastards, Brynden Rivers, alerted him. As soon as the king was informed of Daemon's intentions, he dispatched his elite guard, the King's Guard, to arrest the would-be usurper before his plans could progress any further. However, Daemon was forewarned by Sir Quentin Ball. With his help, the claimant to the throne escaped the capital. Those who supported Blackfire's claim used this attempted arrest as the catalyst for war, claiming that the king had acted against his brother out of nothing more than baseless fear. It was this final event that ignited the first Blackfire Rebellion in 196. Daemon raised the reversed Targaryen banner, showing a black dragon on a red field. The rebels then declared for Daemon Blackfire, first of his name, proclaiming him the true eldest son of Aegon IV. Half the realm declared for the rebels, and half remained loyal to the king, with a patchwork of houses remaining neutral. Meanwhile, Lord Bracken, who supported Daemon, had travelled across the narrow sea in order to hire Meerish crossbowmen and other mercenaries. Fighting broke out across the Seven Kingdoms almost immediately, except for in the north, which was ambivalent to the internal squabbling of the south. In the west, Sir Quentin Ball commanded an army attacking the Westerlands, and managed to win two battles in that region, killing Lord Lefford at the gates of Lannisport, and then defeating Lord Damon Lannister almost immediately afterwards. 
After turning south, Fireball, as he was commonly known, also defeated a loyalist force at the Manda River and killed almost all of Lady Penrose's sons. Further south, in the Reach, the loyalist Leo Tyrell fought against traitorous forces in that region and won many victories. Despite that, the Blackfire forces kept Leo occupied and he was unable to march north in time for the final battle. In 196, after almost a year of open rebellion across the Seven Kingdoms, the usurper Daemon gathered his forces and marched towards King's Landing. In response, Prince Makar Targaryen organized the nearby loyalist forces into a coherent force and went to confront the rebels, while Prince Baylor traveled south in the hopes of rallying Stormlanders and Dornish forces to assist. The two armies met on a plain near the capital, with the high Weeping Ridge anchoring their flanks. The numbers of troops at the Battle of the Redgrass Field are unknown, but it is widely believed the initial armies were in balance. Both forces had a vanguard of heavy knights in the centre, with another smaller contingent of lighter cavalry on the wings and infantry behind. Lord Donal Arran commanded the Loyalist Van, with the Kingsguard commander, Gwain Corbray, at his side. Meanwhile, Prince Makar commanded the infantry from behind his line. The Loyalists also had the elite skirmishing force of Brynden Rivers, the Raven's Teeth, fighting for them. Meanwhile, the enemy force was under the command of Daemon Blackfire and his two sons at the point of his vanguard, with Aegor Bittersteel Rivers on the right and Lord Costain on the left. The usurper began the battle by charging with his vanguard into the Loyalists' cavalry front line. Daemon and his elite warriors were unstoppable cutting the opposing vanguard to pieces and scattering the remains to the rear. As this happened, a famous duel occurred between the usurper and Sir Gwain Corbray, both fighting with Valyrian steel swords. The fight went on for many minutes before Daemon managed to severely injure his opponent, leaving him blind and bleeding. Rather than breaking the Loyalist line, he then stopped in his tracks, ordering his men to take the Honourable Sir Gwain to the rear so he could receive medical assistance. By this time, Brendan Rivers and his elite company of archers had mounted the Weeping Ridge and stood ready to attack. Seeing the black fire assault succeeding, he ordered his longbowmen to rain arrows down around the reverse Targaryen banner. Daemon's elder son Aegon perished under the first hail of missiles, followed by Daemon himself. His younger son Aemon then took up Blackfire, but Brynden slew him as well. With their leaders and vanguard decimated by the Loyalist archers, the rebels gradually began to flee. However, Aegor Rivers, who had commanded the right flank at the beginning of the battle, was able to rally the fleeing soldiers into a countercharge at the royal forces, while he fought a duel with Brynden Rivers and took one of his eyes. It appeared for a moment as if this might break the royal forces, but then war horns were heard from the rear. Prince Baylor had entered the battlefield with a host of Dornish and Stormlanders and crashed into the rebels from behind. At the same time, Prince Makar ordered his army to charge the enemy front, which crushed them between his anvil and Baylor's hammer. 10,000 men died on the Red Grass Field, a victory which ended the first Blackfire Rebellion and secured King Daeron's rule. However, Aegor Rivers managed to flee the battle and escaped to Essos, where he would form the Golden Company mercenary group. He also took with him the five surviving sons and several daughters of the dead Blackfire claimant. While the first rebellion had been quelled, the Blackfire pretenders continued to plague the Seven Kingdoms until Malus the Monstrous died at the hands of Sir Barristan Selmy in 260 AC. Our series on GRR Martin's universe will continue, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. We would like to express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters and channel members who make the creation of our videos possible. Now you can also support us by buying our merchandise via the link in the description. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.